and 70 marks theory. This is the bifurcation of the marks. Right. So the uh, scientific after the uh, after a scientific element has been added to this subject, so same way the tests, the researches, the experiments were started going on. Now how it developed? There uh, are various school of thoughts. I'm not able to uh, describe them, explain them all in detail today. I just name few of them. Uh, any discipline, if it starts, how does it develop gradually? So the first school of thought was given by Wilhelm Wundt that was known as structuralism. And there were many, right? Functionalism, gestalt psychology, humanistic approach, psychoanalysis. These are various school of thoughts. Now, after that, in first chapter, we have done many themes and applications and various branches of psychology. Uh, what are the different fields of specializations? Those are also known as human service area. I hope other students remember. We talk about clinical psychologists, the counselors, the organizational psychologists, the environmental psychologists, the school psychologists, right? So these are various fields of specialization. This is a, this uh, was just a brief introduction about the subject. Now we have started two days back, chapter number two. The topic is, the name of the chapter is Methods of Inquiry in Psychological Setup. Well, what does it mean? After getting an introduction of the subject, I again and again said this thing that we used to do researches, we used to uh, you know, uh, do some experiments. Now, a basic question arises in your mind as this is a new subject for all of you. What are the methods through which we can do all these experiments by which we can conduct the researches in this subject? So we're going to study about the various methods those are used in psychological inquiry or any scientific research. So we have started the chapter. The first we have done the goals of inquiry. See, whenever you do something, there are certain goals. You have taken this subject, right, as your optional subject. So there must be some goals in your mind. Huh? There is some kind of planning in your mind why you have opted this subject, right? So in the same manner, there are certain goals of any scientific research or any inquiry. So the first goal we have done of description. We will describe the topic. Then second, we have talked about the explanation. We will explain the different things we're going to study, right? There were different goals we have studied. So first one is what? The description. We will describe the topic or the theme which we want to study. After that comes prediction. We'll predict the things that how it will going to happen in psychology, what we used to do. We predict the things in advance that if this is there, if this kind of behavior is there, this could be the result or this will be the result. So this is a kind of prediction we used to do. After that comes explanation. In explanation, what we do? We explain the things. We find out the causes. We find out the determinants of the behavior which is happening. After that, we have discussed about the control. Now, there is a need to control many things during research. So in this control, we have talked about three conditions. The first one, we'll take the behavior as it is. The second one, Either we will decrease it and the third one, or we can enhance it or increase it. And after the last goal was application. We have done some experiment, we have done some research, and we came up with conclusions, with the results. Now, what is the use of those results? So we will apply those results to the general population, to the normal people, who can get who can get advantage out of it yes so we will apply those results to the general population thereafter we have done the steps in psychological inquiry or in any scientific research we talked about objectivity 
we talked about systematic approach now objectivity i told you a test or an experiment has to be objective whenever we talk about and it will yield more precise and accurate results if the test is objective the chances of the results to be accurate increases objectivity simply means i have given a very simple example out of your class if i call upon two students to measure the length of the table and i will give the same tool to the students they will come with the same result almost to the same result so if two people are doing the same thing thing with the same measuring tool and they are coming with the same result that means the result is objective right so objectivity is very much needed second one we have talked about the systematic approach or the systematic steps so the first step we have talked about the conceptualizing a problem now again if we are conducting a research we will decide or we will select a particular theme or topic for the study for example if i want to study the habits of the students like how do they study so i will take the study habits of students at home that at home how much time they devote what kind of uh, uh, time table they follow so this is all about the study habits i have taken as the topic the second one comes collecting data there are different methods there are different aspects of collecting data that we have discussed it is very simple the third one is drawing conclusions now after collection of data we will take out the results out of it for that what we have to do for that we have to analyze the result for that we have to assess the result right so we will assess or analyze the data through some statistical procedures you must have heard about all these terms earlier that there are certain statistical procedures be it a pie chart be it a bar diagram be it a cumulative frequencies yes you have used all these things you have drawn this on a graph paper so by applying certain statistical procedures we analyze or we evaluate the data which we have collected so this is all about drawing conclusion the third step the third one is revising research conclusion revising research conclusion i talked about hypothesis a term which is often used hypothesis means it is a tentative solution to a problem or you can also use word assumption in hypothesis what we are doing we are assuming something to be happened or we are offering certain solution a tentative solution to a problem so hypothesis can be proved also and it can be disproved also while doing the research or after getting the result if our hypothesis is proved there is nothing there is no need to do anything right we'll apply those results to the normal population but in case sometimes it happens although it is very rare but sometimes it happens that hypothesis disproves so in that case what we will do we will again conduct the research we will again conduct the experiment but this time what we will do we will introduce certain changes we will manipulate or we will do some modifications in certain things so that we can prove our hypothesis the second time right now next topic we have done alternative paradigm of research as a uh, psychology is considered a social science also and it is considered a natural science also but still under this heading they are emphasizing or they are focusing on what the understanding part as compared to the explanation or prediction or controlling the thing simply in this topic they are saying that certain behaviors are there as human behavior is very complex right so certain behaviors are there uh, which we cannot study in a proper laboratory setup we have given very good examples suppose a person who has encountered 
who has passed through a natural calamity hmm? or a person is having a prolonged illness or suffering from any uh, harmful or deadly disease is it uh, ethical uh, or on humanitarian grounds do you all think it is uh, right to call that person inside the laboratory and then applying <clears throat> the control conditions and then taking his or her responses no it will not at all appropriate right so what will we do in that case we will just emphasize upon the understanding part we will just have a subjective data hmm? not the objective data objective means where certain uh, close and dead questions are there or certain planned strategy is there no we will apply a subjective method in that case the person has to just uh, tell about his or her experiences in his or her own words so alternative paradigm of research is emphasizing upon the understanding part of the psychology rather than the explanation and prediction of the things as it is done in physical sciences right then we talked about the nature of psychological data nature what is the nature what are the types of data that we collect so what type of information we have four types of uh, data is there demographic when it is related to the personal information age name gender occupation religion second one is physical information when it is related to the ecological conditions or the environmental conditions right the third one is physiological data when it is related to the physical appearance or the physique or the body height weight uh, heart rate blood pressure right so duration of sleep this is all about physiological data and the last one is psychological information psychological information it is very much concerned with us so psychological attributes are what a person's intelligence a person's attitude values emotions motivation thought processes right so this is all about what the psychological information now we have discussed the very first method which is known as observational method in observational method i told you there is a basic difference between to see something and to observe something yes when we see something there is not a proper intention uh, many things are there in front of you right now you are just perceiving them but what you are observing right now all of you you are observing me and how ma'am is explaining yes you are observing the video that how ma'am is explaining the topic so this is observation when you have a proper intention behind so there is a difference between to see something or to observe something the same manner in the observational method a researcher does what he observe a selected behavior so this is the first step what he does in observational method same manner as we talk about the steps we select a particular topic a particular theme of our study right the second thing what he does recording now if i'm if i'm observing anything any behavior or any event i must have some recording strategies or some tools so recording could be done either i am taking notes as you uh, many of you are writing in your rough notebooks right now so this is also a kind of recording hmm? a proper recording should be there the or the full video is recording so this is also termed under recording only and we can have certain tallies or we can just uh, uh, use some short hand symbol uh, you know the telegraphic speech jisse bolte hain we can note down uh, the things into telegraphic speech that is in short these are all what the recording techniques right and the third one after this what is analysis of data obviously when we selected a particular behavior we have recorded it after what we going to do we will evaluate we will assess or we will analysis 
we will analyze the data that means that we will going to take out some meaning out of it right there will be a meaning just because of this we are doing any uh, research right so we will take out the meaning out of it under the analysis of data now what is the most important thing about observational method that it is a very skillful method each and every individual I, if i say is able to do no there should be proper training uh, much proficiency is required from the researcher side he must be very proficient he must be a good trainer and then only he or she will be able to record any behavior skillfully right now we have talked about types of observation there are basically two types first one is naturalistic versus controlled observation very simple as names are suggesting see i am i know i am very fast because i am repeating these things i think the third time so that's why the persons the students who are attending from the very first day maybe they are finding it quite boring but as new students are coming so we have to think about them also so that's why i am repeating the things as we have done this till here we have done earlier but no matter from tomorrow or from today itself we will start with the new topic so there are types of observation the first one is naturalistic versus controlled <clears throat> jab naturalistic ki baat karte hain to matlab it should be natural right what are the natural settings the surroundings the environment suppose you are sitting in a classroom that will also considered a natural setting suppose you are playing in the park suppose you are playing in a playground yes you are buying something inside the mall you are uh, uh, you have visited to a hospital so that all considered will be, that will all considered as a natural setting so natural setting mein jab hum jaise behavior occur ho raha hai we are observing it the other side is controlled observation children remember this thing whenever we talk about controlled observation it is done in laboratories right when there are lots of control strategies are there so whenever we are doing certain or we are studying certain behavior under controlled condition that means the laboratory conditions are there in which certain control strategies are employed so this is very simple naturalistic versus control we're going to give one one example of each one second type of observation is what non participant versus participant now non participant means as name is suggesting that the researcher or the person who is doing the research is not participating in the study <clears throat> right non participant he is not participating the other is participant when the researcher involve himself or herself into the study it becomes a participant observation to simplify let me give you an example suppose in non participant if i say um, in a classroom i want to study the behavior of students right and i am a researcher right i am a researcher so what i will do either i will uh, you know uh, set a camera inside the class as we all have in our school or i will just sit down at the back side quietly silently and the class will go on the teacher is teaching you all students are listening to the lecture and i am sitting at the back the last bench and i am observing the behavior which is going inside the class that will become non participant because in no, i'm not participating in any of the activities in any manner right i'm just sitting quietly quietly and silently participant observation means suppose uh, um you are a, a group of students are there obviously in the class and i took the admission in your class as a researcher and i will also convey you this motive that as a researcher i have taken admission and i want to be a part of your group and i want to know about certain behavior about certain human behavior so it will take time for you people to accept me 
because you know that uh, you will become little bit conscious that this person is recording or is observing your behavior so in some manner so you will become conscious alert but after a period of time when a rapport will be established between you and me so the things will happen normally in a very natural way so that is participant observation when i told you about my motive but i became the part of your group right so this is what non participant versus participant observation now after each method will going to tell about the limitation the strength of the method so the strength of this method is the uh, the, uh, the biggest strength is what it enables the researcher to study people and their behavior in a naturalistic situation right as the behavior is occurring in a naturalistic situation we are observing it as it is so this is a great advantage no manipulation no modification is there right so accuracy increases very much in this case the biggest limitation is what of observation method that it is labor intensive requires lot of people right and it requires lot of efforts also sometimes not lot of people but it requires lot of efforts labor intensive it is time consuming yes it takes time and is susceptible to the observer's bias now what does it mean you all have heard this word biases yes see as a person we have different past experiences we have different personality huh we have nurtured we have reared in different homes right so we all have our personal beliefs but when it converts into biases suppose i start favoring a particular section of the society more as compared to others if i start favoring a particular religion more as compared to other religion if i start favoring a particular complexion right as compared to other complexion when i talk about physical appearance it will turn into biases so there are observers biases each and every individual will rate the observation in different manner right i am observing a particular behavior in a way maybe any one of you will record the same behavior in other way the interpretation the recording the analysis of data will be different why because it is based upon our personal biases our personal beliefs which could be wrong also right so this is all about observational method now i'll going to start with the second method that is known as experimental method which is i think the most important among this and this is the most important part of this chapter as well from exam point of view so you can write somewhere that it has to be uh, you know uh, focused more so experimental method means what first of all please try to understand the basic terms which we're going to use under this method and i'll going to give you a very good very uh, easy example later on we talk about variables yes the concept of variable now variable means what anything which could be varies right then now you will ask what is varies varies means which could be changed hmm? variety is there so anything which could be varies or which could be measured right at the same time is known as variable if i take a example of pen so the pen will not be a variable keep this in mind the attributes of pen will be the variables now what will be the attributes or what will be the features of pen it may be shape it may be size it may be color of the pen so these are what the attributes of pen different shapes different sizes and different color so all these things will play the part of variable right if we talk about if i talk about an individual so the individual the person will not be a variable but the characteristics of that person will be variable what will be the characteristics 
if i talk about physiological characteristics maybe uh, her color her weight right uh, her height and if i talk about psychological attributes of a person maybe it is related to intelligence uh, attitude aptitude uh, his or her emotional level so this is all what the variables now two important terms which will you which you will uh, hear very often in the subject first one is independent variable as name is suggesting this variable is independent it is not dependent on any so independent variable is that variable which is manipulated or altered or its strength vary by the researcher in the experiment what does it mean i know it is little bit difficult for you people to understand first of all take a pen in your hand start writing in your rough copy the first term variable variable is what anything which could be varies and at the same time can be measured write a small example that pen it is not a variable but the attributes or the features of the pen are the variables right come upon the second thing independent variable it is the variable which is manipulated manipulated matlab change kar sakte hain kuch manipulations kar sakte hain altered or its strength could be varied its strength ko you can increase it also you can decrease it also and who will do this task the researcher the experimenter the person who is conducting the research right so independent variable now what is dependent variable the second variable the variables on which the effect of independent variable is observed dependent variable as name is suggesting that it is depending upon something so dependent variables are depending on whom or depend depending on what independent variables right so we are uh, doing certain manipulations or we are doing certain changes that will what independent variable and when we see the effect of those changes on something that will become dependent variable now another name just write in bracket in front of independent variable it is the cause of the behavior and dependent variable ke aage in the bracket just write down note it down effect so cause and effect relationship is very important under which method experimental method the method which we are discussing right now right so independent variable is the cause anything which is causing and dependent variable is the effect upon which we are observing the effects of something right now the third variable are uh, is known as sometimes extraneous variables or sometimes relevant variables you can use both the term both are synonymous the third variable is known as extraneous extraneous means the external yes or the relevant variables this is the third type of variable two names are there you can use it you can use any of it extraneous or relevant variable now what happen children whenever we do certain experiment in this we take independent group right sorry we take experimental group and we take control group now in this experimental and control group we are taking independent way independent variable there are other variables present where in our surroundings or in our situations that also have to be controlled there are a lot of variables right now but i don't want to study those variables i have already selected my independent variable and dependent variable as a researcher but at the same time i also need to control those extraneous variables which could affect my study later on 
right so i'll tell you what are certain strategies to control those extraneous variables later on right now just understand the concept of independent variable and dependent variable uh, to give a very simple example suppose i say independent variable uh, the weather condition right any weather condition i have taken suppose i have taken the humidity so independent variable is what humidity in my study and what will be the dependent variable the concentration level of the students right this will what dependent variable now the humidity is the cause and the concentration of the students will become the effect there is a relationship you all can relate now you all can understand that humidity is somewhere affecting your concentration level yes when you are in a very soothing and in a very pleasant environment our concentration always increases we are able to concentrate on the things which we are focusing but whenever the weather conditions are very uh, undesirable or unpleasant it is affecting our performance level our concentration level so this is a very simple example independent variable is what the humidity and dependent variable is what the concentration now apart from these two variables there are other variables also operating at the time maybe you take example a lot of noise is coming from outside right or maybe you can take a lot of um, Mm, disturbance is creating by anything else suppose persons are fighting outside so that is also external variable which you haven't as a researcher taken into your study now you need to control those variables at the same time because it will affect your study later on so we'll talk about now the experimental and control groups tomorrow right till here i hope you have understood Ah, uh, Pushpa, ma'am, can you please uh, stop the recording and?